Hello everyone, welcome to the course on basic electronics. The course code is 23CT23B. So today we'll be discussing about module 3, integrated circuit operational amplifiers and its applications. So in this video, we will be discussing about the summing amplifiers and differential amplifiers which are the applications of operational amplifiers. First, summing amplifiers. So here we have a circuit for summing amplifier. So basically the summing amplifier is simply a direct coupled inverting amplifier with two inputs applied to two resistors R1 and R2 with two input voltages Vi1 and Vi2 there are two input currents I1 and I2 also because the op-amp uh, inverting input terminal behaves as a virtual ground so as for an inverting amplifier the input currents can be given as I1 is equal to so this is the current I1 which is flowing through the resistor R1 this is current I2 flowing through the resistor R2 so current I1 can be written as V I1 by R1 as the voltage applied across the uh, resistor R1 is V I1 and the voltage applied across the resistor R2 is V I2 so I1 is equal to V I1 by R1 I2 is equal to V I2 by R2 all of I1 and I2 flows through the resistor R3 so here the resistor R3 is a feedback resistor which is connected uh, from output pin number 6 to the pin number 2 which is an inverting input terminal so the output voltage is equal to can be given as minus of I1 plus I2 into R3 so the output voltage can be written as I1 can be replaced as Vi1 by R1 plus Vi2 by R2 into R3 with R1 is equal to R2 we can write this equation as output voltage is equal to minus R3 by R1 into Vi1 plus Vi2 so when R3 is equal to R1 is equal to R2 like all the resistors are equal then the output voltage is the direct or inverted sum of the two inputs so when R3 is greater than R1 and R2 the output is an amplified version of the sum of the inputs a summing amplifier is not limited to two inputs there can be almost any number of inputs and the output remains the sum of the inputs summing amplifiers are designed in the same way as ordinary inverting amplifiers so in order to understand what is a virtual short circuit or virtual ground of an op-amp as the name indicates it is virtual not real ground for some purposes we can consider it as equivalent to ground in op-amps the term virtual ground means that the voltage at that particular node is almost equal to ground voltage that is zero volts it's not physically connected to ground this concept is very useful in analysis of op-amp circuits and it will make a lot of calculations very simple so here we have a circuit to understand uh, the virtual ground so internally both the terminals um, like inverting and non-inverting input terminals will be connected through the resistor uh, which is called as input impedance like input impedance is infinite so both the terminals are uh, infinite input impedance gives inf infinite input impedance so the V2 is approximately equals to 0 since V1 is connected to the ground it can be considered that V2 is also at ground level so this is uh, this means that uh, physically the one of the terminal is not directly connected to the ground but it is can be seen that the, there is a virtual ground it, it is connected internally so it's a virtual ground so 
so an ideal op amp will provide infinite voltage gain for real op amps also the gain will be very high such that we can consider it as an uh, infinite for calculation purposes so gain is a ratio of output voltage to the input voltage as gain is infinite input voltage becomes zero so v in is equal to v2 minus v1 in the above circuit v1 is uh, so in the circuit v1 is connected to the ground like one of the terminal is connected to the ground so uh, since v1 is equal to zero like v2 will also be at ground potential and v2 will become zero so that's why the point here it is mentioned as virtual ground so the difference between the virtual ground and the real ground virtual ground is a concept that made for easy explanation and calculation purposes voltage is approximately zero in case of uh, virtual ground in case of real ground real ground is a terminal or uh, it's a terminal which is physically connected to the ground or uh, earth so which acts as the reference point for the entire circuit so in case of real ground the voltage is zero but in case of virtual ground it is approximately equal to zero not exactly zero and in case of uh, real ground it is an infinite current sink but in case of virtual ground not able to sink infinite current and virtual ground not electrically connected to the ground real ground electrically connected to the ground yeah coming to the summing amplifiers so here we have uh, one of the circuit which shows it's a three input summing amplifier so in this uh, we have three resistors here like r r a r b and r c so in this r a r b r c the three resistors the current flowing through each resistor is i b R I A I B and uh, I C. So the three input voltages are applied here. One is V A V B and uh, V C. So that is applied to, uh, and uh, connected to the V two terminal. So through V two, one of the feedback resistor is connected uh, to the output pin. That is pin number six. And um, the non-inverting input terminal is connected to the ground through the resistor R L. So here the input resistor is a it's a parallel like R A parallel R B parallel R C parallel R F. It's a circuit. So due to the virtual ground concept, I B the current flowing through that pin number two is also will be approximately equal to the zero. And uh, pin number six is the output terminal, and one of the resistor R L is connected to the uh, output pin number six. So this R L acts as a load resistor. So the total current can be given as I A plus I B plus I C is equal to I F. So I A can be written. I A is the current flowing through the resistor R A. So uh, it can be written as the voltage current across uh, resistor I A can be written as V A by R A plus V B by R B plus V C by R C is equal to minus V B by R F. So the resistor uh, if we assume that R A is equal to R B is equal to R C. Then the output voltage can be written as minus R F by R A into V A plus V B plus V C. So V naught is equal to minus V A plus V B plus V C. So the output voltage becomes equal to minus of R F by R A into V A plus R F by R B into V B plus R F by R C into V C. So the output voltage is um, given as minus of sum of all the voltages by 3 so next is difference amplifier so difference amplifier difference amplifier amplifies the difference between two inputs the circuit uh, we can see here it's a combination of inverting and non-inverting amplifiers Resistors R1, R2 and the op amp constitute an inverting amplifier for a voltage VI1 applied to R1. The same components R1, R2 and the op amp also function uh, functioning as a non-inverting amplifier for a voltage VR4 at the non-inverting terminal. Inverting input terminal. 
so it's it can be seen that vr4 is derived from input voltage vi2 by the voltage divider r3 and r4 to understand the circuit operation we can consider the output produced by each input uh, like each input voltage when the other input is zero let us say uh, keeping vi1 some voltage and making vi2 zero the output voltage v not one can be written as minus r2 by r1 into v i1 so with v i1 is equal to zero the output voltage v not two can be uh, given as r1 plus r2 divided by r1 into v r4 and v r4 is equal to r4 by r3 plus r4 into v i2 therefore v not two is equal to r1 plus r2 by r1 into r4 by r3 plus r4 into v i2 so with r3 is equal to r1 and r4 is equal to r2 the output voltage v not 2 can be written as r2 by r1 into v i2 so with both the inputs um, that are present here v not can be written as v not 2 plus v not 1 is equal to r2 by r1 v i2 plus minus r2 by r1 into v i1 therefore v not is equal to r2 by r1 into v i2 minus v i1 when R2 is equal to R1, the output voltage is the direct difference between the two inputs with R2 greater than R1. So the output becomes an amplifier version of uh, difference between the two input voltages. So this is the circuit and these are the equations. So we have two uh, common mode input voltage uh, applied to the difference amplifier. This is the common mode outputs may be ruled uh, nulled by the adjustment of the R4. So in this, uh, like the, we can vary some of the parameters like input resistance. Consider the input portion of the difference amplifier uh, circuit that reproduced in the figure. Like resistance at input terminal 1 is the same as the input impedance for, for an uh, inverting amplifier that is zi1 is equal to r1 the input resistance at the op amp non-inverting input terminal is very high as in the case of uh, non-inverting amplifier and this is in parallel with resistor r4 so the input impedance at terminal 2 is uh, zi2 is equal to r3 plus r4 so here uh, an equation can be derived by assuming that r3 is equal to r1 and R4 is equal to R2 so it, it gives the same result that is obtained when the ratio R4 by R3 equals to R2 by R1 so that the actual resistor values do not have to be equal for equal resistances at the two input terminals we can select R3 plus R4 is equal to R1 so the to calculate the resistances of R3 and R4 uh, from the ratio that is R4 by R3 is equal to R2 by R1. It's a simple rule of thumb that can be used for determining suitable resistance values for R3 and R4. When the two input resistances do not have to be exactly equal, select R4 is equal to R2 by ACL, which always makes R4 is equal to R1. Then calculate R3 as R3 is equal to R1 by ACL. Here ACL denotes the closed loop gain. So these are uh, the things about uh, difference amplifier. So apart from this, uh, this operational amplifiers uh, which are integrated circuits that amplify the difference in voltage between two inputs and are used in many analog and power applications like it can um, some of the common applications includes like uh, signal amplification operational amplifiers are used in applications that involve weak signals that need to be amplified for different purposes the other one is noise rejection the differential input of the op amp can reject common mode noise in noisy environments sensors op amps amplify analog signals from sensors in iot connected home appliances and measuring instrument Electrical appliances like op-amps are found in almost all electrical appliances. 
linear applications. Op-amps are used in a variety of linear and non-linear analog systems such as adder or summing amplifiers, subtractors and differentiators. So there are other applications like it can be used in voltage buffers, creating analog filters, threshold detectors, filter designs and comparator circuits. And uh, some of the advantages of operational amplifiers coming to the advantages uh, like it has many advantages like uh, high gain op amps offer a high ratio of conversion from one the input signal to the output which is ideal for applications that requires a, a setup such as uh, high quality imaging low noise and distortion like op amps provide relatively high amplification with relatively low noise or distortion compact size so op amps are compact which allows them to be integrated into larger circuits so high input impedance op amps have a very high input impedance in circuit which prevents losses and gives the device almost infinite gain versatile like op amps are versatile devices that can be used as amplifiers comparators and filters in analog engineering easy to use op amps are simple to use and can be easily used in a circuit so it is cheap op amps are inexpensive devices uh, and it is easy to replace like op if any op amp is damaged then it can be easily replaced without major changes required and it is easy to program also like op amps uh, uh, can be easily programmed to create circuits at a professional level making them suitable for use in simulation circuits So it's compact inside, high common mode rejection, high open loop gain, ease of replacement, low bias current, infinite input resistance, high gain, high bandwidth and its impedance matching. So all these are advantages. And uh, there are some limitations using this operational amplifiers include the fact that they are analog circuits and require a designer that understands analog fundamentals such as loading frequency response and stability so it's not uncommon to design a simple op amp circuit so only to turn it on and find that it is oscillating Thank you.